Hello, good day everyone. Well, this is a better, bittersweet moment. This is the last devotional that we will be doing for Centerpoint. We started these devotionals in during COVID and it was a way just to stay in contact with each other, worship the Lord and encourage each other with God's word. And we've, so we've been doing this for like four years. It has been a wonderful privilege for all of us to be involved. And we just, uh, we thank Centerpoint and the staff for supporting these devotionals. But as I said, this is our last one. And so we thought, how do we finish it up? And so I invited a number of my friends, our friends who have been part of our devotionals before and a special surprise guest who's visiting us from another part of the United States. And they all said, yes, they wanted to be part of this last devotional. And so I'm going to, we're all gonna share a Bible verse that talks about a little bit about how we feel about finishing a project or finishing a task and then starting anew, a fresh start. Uh, and it's just, I think it's a wonderful opportunity because I said it was bittersweet. It is an ending, but it's also a beginning. The Lord closes doors and he opens others. We need to be attuned to the Holy Spirit and where he is leading us and then be prepared to obey and say, yes, I will follow you, Lord. So with that, we're gonna uh, go around uh, our little boat here and uh, we'll start with Cindy. Cindy, please. Thank you. As we think about doors um, being closed and new doors being opened, I'm reminded of the scripture verse in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, which says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And I'm just really encouraged by this scripture, thinking about that sometimes, you know, when we finish and it seems like one door is closing, um, God is so faithful and so good and he will always open a new door new door and so I'm really encouraged by the scripture because I am holding on to the promise that he is going to be doing a new thing and so I'm looking forward to uh, what's in the future and I just would encourage you as you look at your season of your life right now perhaps there's doors that are being closed in your life that um, God will open new doors and just remember behold I am new doing a new thing just be encouraged by that thank you Bev yeah um, I'm looking at uh, Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Um, doors have been open to me since I've been going to missions and been around some wonderful people that have just given me a lot of faith in my life. And uh, just recently speaking of, you know, things changing in your life, well, I just got married. <laughs> Amen! Yeah! I feel very blessed uh, being involved in Centerpoint and being involved with the, the people here on this boat and my other friends and being being uh, married. So, thank you. All right, our friend Tracy. Hello, everyone. Um, life has its challenges, and the last time I was able to come and, and do a recording, I was all about Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, and I knew that God has plans for me, but um, I didn't realize His timing. And, um, and just waiting on the Lord and know that he is good and his, he has the perfect plans. And mm. so Psalm 4610 is be still and know that I am God because I know that God has plans for all of us, but sometimes our timing is different from his. But if we stay still and know that he is in control of all things, then we can just sit in that mm. and relax and know that he's the driver of all of this. So let him drive and enjoy yourself along the way. Be still and know that I am God. And thank you for that promise. Ah, thank you, Tracy. And so now our special guest, and I think she's going to share a little bit about where she's been and where she's from, but we welcome Karen. Thank you. Um, I moved to St. Simon's Island, Georgia four years ago, attended Centerpoint for three, four years before we moved and uh, enjoying life there back for a visit and for a wedding and um, been through a lot of um, difficult times in my family and I during those times lost hope I didn't know I could have hope mm. I thought it would be presumptuous of me to think there was hope and a friend shared this verse may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit that's Romans 15:13. And to start each day with that 
delightful verse of we every day we have hope god gives us that hope so to cling to that hope as we move forward mm, thank you and marlena okay <coughs> sorry <coughs> everyone knows i have allergies anyway sorry <laughs> jeremiah 29 11 tracy's favorite uh -huh. verse but it's one of mine too for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. Everyone, we have hope. Even though doors close and we think things are really low and we don't know what to do, depend on the Lord. Pray to him. He will open doors and he will bless you more than you will ever believe. So never give up. Always depend on him and lean on him. Thank you, and it's been a pleasure doing devotions for you. Okay, I guess I'm going to close it. So I'm handing the camera back to Marlena. I think the, the common thread is a deep abiding faith in our Lord. We trust him. And we know that from that we have hope. And a couple things. Be prepared to share our hope, right? Peter tells us, be prepared to share your hope. Why do we hope? Who do we hope in? Be prepared to share the good news of Jesus. And for me, the Bible verse, which I've given a number of times, is sort of my go-to. It's not so much the completion of a project and the starting anew. It's just, how do I live my life? And I think each one of us here, our faith in, in our Lord, we're well grounded in a faith and trust. And we're getting to know Jesus more intimately every day that we try to follow him as loyal uh, disciples, loving disciples. And so it is Colossians 3.17. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to our Father in heaven through him. Go love family, friends, communities, enemies. I know, hard. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your faith. And so we sign off by saying, God bless you, you your families, and your, your communities. communities.